So before we get into this week's episode of Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, a couple notes of housekeeping. First up, I'd like to apologize for not talking about last week's Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns or Saturday's Cardfight Vanguard or even uh, Darling in the Franks. I really wanted to talk about all three of those things. Some A lot of interesting things happened. Okay, I haven't watched this week's Cardfight Vanguard yet, actually, but it's a Masaki episode. We all know I'd find something to say regardless. Um... Work was pretty hectic last week, and also uh, the pa- the weekend itself was Bushi Road Spring Fest to New York, so I was just kind of all over the place. I'm, I'm sorry, and uh, considering the fact that YCS New Jersey or YCS Meadowlands or whatever the heck we're calling this thing is this coming weekend, it might also be kind of a light weekend, so yeah, that's what's going on there. Um, for those of you going to Bushi Road Spring Fest, there are a few left. Uh, let me just give you a couple notes of warning. Uh, do not assume you can finish a deck the morning of. <laughs> do not assume the vendors will have what you need. Assume they're going to have everything but what you need, because that's what happened to me. And also, for those of you playing Buddy Fight, uh, bring an up-to-date deck. <laughs> I haven't actually kept up with the meta of that game for a long time. I was more just looking for fun. Uh, I brought my Dragon World deck, which I actually haven't updated in two years. <laughs> so, needless to say, uh, getting curb stomped was a thing for me that day. Uh, but anyways, on to another thing I'd like to quickly talk about. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee finally got its first trailer last night. I don't talk about Pokemon much, just because there's a lot more P- YouTubers out there who I feel can talk about Pokemon better than I can, and who can dedicate more time to certain aspects of the franchise I would want to talk about, like, say, VGC, or even just the competitive scene for that game in general, or even the anime, which I've kind of fallen off of, I have to get back to. So I don't really talk about Pokemon that much, but I do like it a lot. And personally, I think these games look pretty cool. First up, the one thing a lot of people are kind of split on, the design of it. A lot of people say it looks kind of X and Y-ish. A lot of people say it looks like a step back from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I have a feeling these games might have been in production, maybe even as far back as when Go was announced. Uh, I don't have anything to confirm that. This just kind of feels like, considering they immediately were then like, Gen 8 2019, I can't help but wonder if maybe this is a little filler. But that's not important, because filler can be interesting, and this looks interesting. Kanto, based on what we see of it, has this very vibrant, very colorful look to it that does genuinely feel like an update. Okay, is it as maybe colorful and vibrant as Ultra Sun Ultra Moon? Not really, but considering Kanto doesn't give them a lot to work with design-wise, I thought what we saw looks really cool. I like the character designs. I like these more sort of friendly, cute. I like that they look more like kids. Uh, Because the Pokemon trainers in these games, they don't look like 10-year-olds. Ash doesn't look like a (laughs) 10-year-old. These kind of look like 10-year-olds. And I think it's very fun, very relatable. I think the cartoonish look helps, especially with Pikachu and Eevee's movements. So I really like the graphic design. Uh, The one thing I'm not crazy about is the whole you don't battle wild Pokemon anymore. You just do the Pokemon Go thing. And I ultimately think the goal of these games is that it's to sort of bridge the gap between the Pokemon Go community, which is very strong and still very prominent, with the main series community, getting them into it, getting them into a game that still gives them some of the stuff they know for Pokemon Go so they can get revved up for Generation 8. Because, like it or not, Pokemon Go brought Pokemon back in a big bad way. And I feel like if you want to keep that train going, you need to get those Pokemon Go fans into the main series, which is what it feels like this game is. A nice, simple journey through Kanto, a nice, simple way of playing with your old boys Pikachu and Eevee. I think the game will maybe be a bit more complex than they're letting on, do a lot more things, but it's a pretty looking game. It's a cool looking game. I am legitimately excited, and now I gotta go buy a Switch. Uh, As for Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns this week, first up, The only real thing that mattered last week, Aoi's design change when she's Blue Angel. She is now Blue Girl. Okay, yeah, the name Blue Girl is lazy and stupid. Uh, But the design, I think, is fantastic because it's such a great contrast between Blue Angel. There is the obvious that Blue Angel is designed to be cute and appealing and be an idol, as where Blue Girl... Shut up, phone. 
is meant to be more sort of this, you know, covert spy -y. as much as white and pink accents say spy -y. Um, that's not even a word. So what I, just the dis overall look of this has so much representation of Aoi's gr growth as a character. First up, let's look at like the hair. It's not the big blue. It's, remember, that hair she had when she was Blue Angel is like when she was a kid. She based Blue Angel's design off what is in her head, this idealistic version of a woman or this idealistic version of herself, which involves that very childlike innocence that she lost from losing her parents. Well, now that she's gone through a lot of shit, she doesn't really need that anymore. So that's why she looks more like her normal self. It's sort of like with Yusaku. Yusaku doesn't have this idealistic version of himself. He doesn't have something he's really trying to hide that much besides his identity more for strategic purposes. So he can just make Playmaker look like a, just a tougher version of himself because, well, he has no need for it to be any different. It's the same thing here. Even the way she dresses. She's not trying to impress. She's trying to look more low-key, more normal, how she looks in real life. This represents how she's grown to be more comfortable of herself and accepted both sides of her personality. She's a much stronger willed person and she's much more ready to go into adventure. It's a great little thing and I like that they don't spend a lot of time on it. She just changes and everything is left for you to come to decide and respect and enjoy. Maybe you see it completely different than me. Maybe you don't really read into it and just think it looks cool or think it looks kind of dumb. I've seen some sort of mixed response to this, but I quite like it. Also, Dat Booty in that scene. Um, as for everything else relating to her, that's also great. Her and Emma, I like sort of the dynamic thus far. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of it, but I kind of like this sort of weird sort of buddy cop. Aoi probably doesn't trust Emma all that much, nor should she. Maybe Emma's trying to manipulate Aoi and Akira to get what she wants in the end. I think there's a lot of fun that could be had there. I mean, we already see kind of an interesting setup. Aoi wants to help Akira, like she did in the first season, to show him how she feels. Emma doesn't do anything for anyone else. She doesn't care about impressing anyone else. She's in it for herself. You could have a lot of great interactions between the two just dealing with that alone. And I like what this shows of Akira, that he is more trusting and that he wants out he knows he needs Aoi's help so he goes and he's just honest and upfront with people he's obviously playing his own operation to both help playmaker while also keeping his job and all that good stuff but ultimately it feels like they've progressed a lot more than Yusaku has okay uh just gonna get on this quickly because there's not a lot to say the duel was very bland and generic to me in no small part due to the fact that the drone archetype is pretty uninteresting. And I'm not against inanimate object archetypes. I'm not against archetypes just that are just based on real things. I liked rank 10 trains. I thought they looked really cool, but unlike the drones in this, the trains had personality to them. It was very easy to see their influence. These are just planes. There's nothing that interesting to them and you can make the argument well they're meant to be uh, antagonist archetypes they need to look scary and intimidating they don't look very scary or intimidating they're just planes they're just planes that shoot stuff i think drones are stupid to begin with so yeah they're just not that interesting he just did a lot of generic stuff you can make the argument it's cool that he tried to keep yusaku from using his skill well emma did that with altergeists and that was more interesting because they're altergeists so that was bad. His design is cool, uh, but the backstory was just way too much. I literally burst out laughing. It's just this generic, I have an excuse to hate you or your thing. It was dumb. It was manipulative. Just like a taxi malfunction, so now I hate the internet. <laughs> like, oh god, it was stupid, and I knew where it was going the minute it started. And while we're on the subject, this sort of could be troubling because it means either a this guy is not coming back or not going to have a strong presence in which case his backstory is pointless which it will be regardless but the thing is is that if it means he is coming back and if he has an arc of his own then that's another character pushing each other for screen time in this there's a lot of characters in this we really don't need another one especially one with a gimmick we kind of already have with revolver the idea of hating ai the idea of being wanting to control technology and wanting to do things your way all that is already here <laughs> so what's the point in replicating it with this guy but i don't know maybe you found the whole thing with him interesting 
Maybe you're like most people I've spoken to and you think it's weird and pointless, but uh, let me know below. And as for the TCG question of the week, it's a new meta, boys, and YCS, Jersey, Secaucus, somewhere is happening, and Sky Strikers, many people are expecting to be the best deck. It did take up the majority of tournament slots next week, uh, last week. But it didn't have, like, an overwhelming majority. It was just, like, 33%. Uh, is that just because of availability? Is that just because people wanted more time, considering this is a very combo-heavy deck? Or do you think maybe the deck just isn't that great? Do you think Sky Striker will be the best deck? Do you think because it can be countered with things like Ghost Cherries, which we already have anyways? Uh, what do you think below about that deck? And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and let's can't wait for next week because it looks like Aoi does more than Yusaku who doesn't do much anyways.